Hey guys, Jay here. You know that I love retro gaming, and you know that I love handheld games. So when there's a new piece of hardware on the market that plays cartridges, that have tons of classic games on them, my interest is peaked. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you're new to the channel. And now, let's take a look at the Evercade. Okay guys, so let's talk the Evercade uh, from Blaze Entertainment. Now, uh, I found out about this actually thanks to uh, John Riggs and uh, RGT85, who both did reviews of this right around the same time. And yeah, I got super excited about it. I, like I've said a million times, if I've said it once, I enjoy retro gaming and I enjoy handheld. So this was kind of a match made in heaven for me. So when I purchased this, I spent the $100 and got the Premier System, which gives you uh, the Evercade console, a USB charging cable, and three cartridges. Uh, you get the Atari Collection 1, Data East Collection 1, and Interplay Collection 1. So you get a nice mix of uh, kind of ages there. You know, you've got the Atari age, you uh, kind of segue into the NES with the Data East, and then with Interplay you go straight into the 16-bit era. So there's some really great spread of games here. Now, there's definitely some stuff I want to talk about before we get into it. Uh, the design itself of the console I think is beautiful. I love the red and white. It feels modern and retro at the same time. Uh, it's it's really unique. I like the clear glass appearance of the face buttons uh, for the A, B, X, and Y. And I have no issues with the D-pad. It's, it's really quite nice. Now, with that said, uh, I'm going to actually play some sound for you here uh, after I finish talking about it. But the shoulder buttons kind of bother me. They're very loud, uh, almost distracting to the point where... When I'm playing a game, if I have to use the shoulder buttons or place my fingers on the shoulder buttons, it it kind of kind of gets on my nerves. Uh, here, take a listen. Now, that's not to say that they don't function. The shoulder buttons work just fine, but uh, it's loud. It's not something that I I really. It's not something I can really get upset about because it doesn't impact the functionality of the console or the games at all, but it is something that I notice and it's something I recognize and it's something I hear every time I play it. On the console as well, you do have a headphone jack, which is great, uh, the port for the, U the micro USB connection, uh, and then you've got your up and down toggles for the volume. On the top, you have your on and off toggle, and you have your port for the mini HDMI. Now two things real quick as we're talking about those different ports. I do like that they provided the micro USB cord. I do wish, however, that it was a USB-C. Um, I think having something be a micro USB is kind of detrimental to the overall quality of the design because micro USBs, and they, frankly, they kind of suck. But I understand it's also a cost thing. I mean, I got this console for under $100. Tossing in stuff that's a little bit more expensive technology is just going to drive price up. And I, I'm i pretty sure they probably wanted to keep it at an affordable price point, which I respect. I do wish that they had included a mini HDMI cable because when I got this, uh, I had to wait a couple of days to get one in from Amazon as I didn't realize it didn't come with one. And that's probably on me. I should have read the description a little bit better. But, you know, uh, it, it's just something where I was like, well, man, I really wish that was in there. <laughs> Now, as mentioned, it does it does charge with the micro USB cord, and that gives you about three to five hours of battery life, which isn't a ton, but honestly, you know, you you can just hook right up to a battery pack or right into the wall and keep playing, so you don't really have any worries there. I do wish it had come with a charging plug because just getting the cord felt a little weird to me, because I didn't. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've got plenty of cell phone chargers, which I guess is kind of the prevailing theory here. You know, people have these; it can be used, but it was still kind of like, oh. I didn't expect to not get that. that. That was weird. Now, moving into the cartridges, guys, as you can see here, the packaging is gorgeous. Uh, you get, it's like a classic Sega Genesis clamshell. It's it's very hard plastic. You've got the outside uh, kind of clear scrim over the interior uh, cover. So everything looks really, it feels classic. It feels retro, but at the same time, it feels very modern. Each of the cartridges comes with a full color instruction manual, as you can see here. Uh, and if you go through, like looking at the Atari one, you get a rundown on each of the games. Uh, you get some kind of behind the scenes facts about each one, which is really neat. Uh, in particular for me with the Atari collection, I, I wasn't a big Atari gamer growing up. I, I skipped the Atari, went right to the ColecoVision and the NES. So I don't know a lot about the Atari. And, you know, granted, they're not necessarily games that I love, but it's neat to learn about them and it's neat to see what they are. Uh, and, is, you know, one of the other things I really like about this, as you can see here, guys, the cartridges uh, have full art on uh, a full sticker on the interior. And then on the outside, they've got uh, screen printed what the game is. And when you put it into the Evercade, you actually put it into the console itself. It's such a smooth lineup that it just it looks beautiful. Like I can't 
I can't say enough how much I enjoy the appearance and the aesthetic of this system. It's really nice. So right now, guys, there are 14 cartridges announced, and one of the really nice things about that is these, these aren't one-and-done cartridges. You're getting multiple games on each one. Now, the smallest amount you're going to get is the two-pack of Xenocrisis and Tanglewood, but most cartridges have at least six games on them. And in the case of the ones that came with the system, you get 20 games on the Atari collection, 10 on the Data East, and then six on the Interplay collection. Now, there are some other ones that we don't have here. There is the Oliver Twins collection, which gives you 11 games. Uh, there's two Namco museums, uh, Collection 1 and Collection 2, the Pico Interactive Collection, which gives you a ton of awesome independent games. Uh, we've got the Mega Cat Studios Collection, which is, again, a bunch of great uh, great independent games. Uh, Interplay Collection 2, uh, Atari Lynx Collection 1 and 2, and Atari Collection 2. So there's a ton of great stuff here. But in particular, I want to go over the ones that I've got. So I've got the three that came with it, the Atari Data East and Interplay Collection 1s. And additionally, I later purchased uh, Technos Collection Volume 1. Uh, now, with the Atari Collection Volume 1, you get Centipede, Adventure, Alien Brigade, Asteroids, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, which I love, Food Fight, Desert Falcon, Motor Psycho, Canyon Bomber, Gravitar, Double Dunk, Ninja Golf, which is ridiculous and wonderful, Steeplechase, Night Driver, Tempest, Video Pinball, Aquaventure, Yars Return, and Sword Quest. There's a lot of classic stuff on there. Uh, I have played so far, I've played Centipede, Adventure, Asteroids, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, Food Fight, uh, and Ninja Golf. And, you know, while I'm not a big Atari gamer, and I don't know that I'll be keep going back to this cartridge, it was a lot of fun to, to step back to when I was a little kid and play these games again. Now, Data East gives you 10 games, and it is a just amazing collection of 10 games. Uh, you get Bad Dudes which it's bad dudes. Are you a bad enough dude to save the president? Burger Time, which is a classic. Midnight Resistance, Side Pocket, Two Crude Dudes, Fighter's History, Joe and Mac 2, Karate Champ, which I am terrible at, and you'll see in this video, Magical Drop 2, and Burn and Rubber. So you do get a nice mix here. You've got classic Data East beat-em-ups with bad dudes and two crude dudes. You've got a fighting game with uh, Fighter's History. Uh, Joe and Mac 2 is one of the best platformers ever made. I don't care who says it. And then you've got some neat puzzle platforming with Burger Time. Uh, but honestly, the one I have enjoyed the most off this collection, which I did not expect, was Magical Drop 2. It's a really wonderful little puzzle game. Uh, and it's, it's loud, it's funny, uh, and it looks great. It's so good. Now, moving over Interplay. Now, Interplay was at its best uh, in uh, in the 1990s, where there were just amazing games released. Uh, and with this one, you get Clay Fighter, Boogerman, a flick and pick adventure, which, uh, just a heads up with Boogerman, uh, sounds and plays great in handheld mode, but when you get it onto the TV, the sound is a little wonky, so be, be aware of that. Incantation, which I had never heard of before, but is just adorable and charming and a lot of fun. Uh, Titan, Battle Chess, which I love Battle Chess, I've always loved Battle Chess, uh, and Earthworm Jim, which uh, is just as hard as you remember. Uh, and then on the additional one that I purchased, the Technos Collection 1, you get, they could have just called this the Double Dragon Collection, because you get Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, and Super Double Dragon, all which are wonderful uh, and hard and fantastic. You also get River City Ransom, which I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about, Super Dodgeball, Super Spike V-Ball, Renegade, and then uh, the sleeper hit of the collection, the Crash and the Boys Street Challenge. I really appreciate uh, that Blaze has given a lot of love to the independent developers, uh, especially with the Pico collection uh, and stuff like that. I, I think there's... Independent gaming is important. And to have a company kind of, you know, they, they built a retro console, but they built a retro console that can play uh, retro-styled modern games uh, and allow them to be purchased in, in a physical format for somebody. And you don't have to spend an arm and a leg like you would through Limited Run. This is something where it's, it's a $20 price point, it's affordable, and you get a physical version of the game, and it's fantastic. Now, there are some issues that I do have with the console. This is a single-player-only experience. You are not going to be playing multiplayer, so unfortunately that's an issue. I know they have said that they're looking into it, so hopefully down the road we'll be able to take care of that. The One of the small problems I have is that you can't remap buttons right now without getting a firmware update. And unfortunately it's not as easy as just turning the console on and connecting to the internet and getting a firmware update. You actually have to download it from their website and then install it onto your system. It's an extra step, not a huge deal, but it is something to be aware of. The shoulder buttons, as I mentioned, they clink and they drive me crazy. 
I also experienced a couple of times where my mini HDMI just randomly disconnected uh, as I was playing, and that completely reset the system, which was kind of surprising to me. Um, so I'd be in the middle of a game playing, and all of a sudden it would just kind of decide to disconnect, and I would be kicked back to the Evercade boot screen. I lost progress, and it was a little frustrating. Now, I don't know if that's an issue with my, my mini HDMI cable, but I will say that it's brand new, so I don't know. And I will say that the other problem I have is when you put the carts into the console, it's a really tight fit. I feel like it it's kind of hard to put them in there, and it can be a struggle to get them out, but I haven't run into any issues yet like I have with my Retron 5. Okay, guys, so final thoughts on the Evercade. Uh, I spent $100 on this system, and I don't personally regret it. Uh, there's definitely some some minor nuances that kind of kind of bother me a little bit, but it's not things that I'm so upset by that I think are deal breakers for the console. Now that said, this console is made for me. I am a handheld gamer and I am a retro gamer, so this is basically they could have just said called this the JK and I'd have been fine. But it's not going to be for everybody. Uh, if you're not into retro games, if you're not into independent games, this probably is something you can pass on. But if you are into retro games and independent games, this is definitely something I think you should consider picking up. It's got a great introductory price point for the Premier system at $100, and the cartridge costs of $20 a piece, they're not prohibitive. Uh, I actually picked up the Technos collection because uh, it had to have Crash and the Boys, uh, and I didn't, it was a drop in the bucket. You know, it was kind of an afterthought. I was buying something else on Amazon. I was like, ah, let me check and see if they've got that Technos collection, and sure, as, sure enough, they did. I think anytime you buy a new piece of hardware, there's always a chance for some buyer's remorse. But in this case, I don't really have any. There's there's some nitpicks I have with the console, to be sure, but I don't feel like I've wasted any money. One of the really appealing things about the system is that the cartridges are only $20. So if you like retro games and you want to have a retro game collection for $20, bucks, you can do that. If you're into independent games and you want to get something like Coffee Crisis along with a bunch of other great games, you can do that too. This is a great console for that. Now, if you're a modern gamer and you're not into handhelds or anything like that, I would say pass the system up. It's not necessarily something you're going to want to invest any money in. But I do think if you are a retro gaming fan, it's not something you're going to regret. I know I don't. Uh, it's got good battery life. The screen looks great. It's really loud. Like, the sound quality is fantastic on these little speakers. So I think it's a great purchase. Guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And let us know down below in the comments section if there's any particular cartridges you'd like to see come to the Evercade, or if you have the Evercade yourself and what you think of the console. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Be sure to click the subscribe button, and while you're there, ring the notification bell as well so you can stay up to date with everything we've got coming out. Guys, this has been a lot of fun. I love reviewing hardware for you guys, and especially getting new stuff in. I think it's great. Uh, you guys really like the Carby review. I hope you enjoy this one because, frankly, I think it's a great purchase. This, this is a neat little console here. And it does a lot of stuff really, really, really well. And the stuff it doesn't do well is minor and you can overlook it. Until next time, guys, I've been Jay. And you, stay square.